Hey there, SVSers. Welcome to Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania, the home of Worldwide Stereo. It is great to be with you guys here. We're back at a live event. It's been a few weeks, so uh, we're going to take you on a tour here. I've got Nick behind the camera. I'm Larry, and yeah, turn it around. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's Nick, or his forehead most likely. And uh, we're going to take you guys inside. There's already over 100 people here. We're out here on this really busy street. So you know we hit the big time when we yeah. got the big marquee the sign marquee. coming out on one of the busiest roads here in the country. I swear, this, there's, the traffic never stops here. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's we got a wild. packed house. There's their beautiful storefront. This is one of the finest AV showrooms in the country. Uh, we had to bring out a police person to uh, guide traffic. And yeah, you know they're going to be out there guiding everyone. Here Things might get wild, so somebody might end up in the backseat yeah, of that cruiser. I'm, hoping out Larry. I'm going to make sure that uh, I don't back over anything, but this store has been here forever. It's an institution here in Pennsylvania. They've got multiple locations. They're uh, big retail online, too. And if you live in the area, this is a store you should really feel, you know, privilege to have because there's not a lot of retail stores like this so when we go inside we're going to take you on a tour they have multiple theater rooms two channel listening rooms speaker switching rooms all the televisions and projectors you could use and just a phenomenal uh, staff as well so sorry we're, we're kind of distracted because we're trying to not get hit by cars so i think we're going to go in here and make our way in and try to not trip and fall and step on this hey those are i don't know if those are going to turn it looks cool Let's take you guys inside. Uh, uh, so. Thank you. So you can tell right when you walk in, they have this outdoor audio section here with the, uh, the rock speakers. And oh, look at that marquee. They were all out for SBS here with the uh, Night of Sonic Thrills. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're being filmed. So it's very meta tonight. There's going to be a lot of cameras on us within the camera. So it's like the Matrix. Come on in. Don't worry about us. So uh, let's take you through the entryway here at Worldwide Stereo. So you come into their outdoor patio section and it's all about outdoor TVs, outdoor speakers, outdoor audio. And you can see behind me the uh, phenomenal Bauer speaker systems behind us. We've got this desk here where we're giving away some prizes tonight. I believe we have some prizes for you guys on the other end too. So I don't know if we need to talk about that as well. That's right. And uh, uh, I think I know what they are. Yes, I do know what they are. We have a pair of our Prime Wireless Pro powered bookshelf speakers. Uh, we have an SB1000 Pro subwoofer, and then we have an SB2000 Pro subwoofer with a SoundPath subwoofer cable to give away. So I will be doing the same thing we always do, reading out names live on air, and then we got Vince working behind the scenes. We'll get your information. Yeah, all you got to do is comment out. once. We don't need a zillion comments. Uh, just once you do that, you're entered. And then we've got a randomizer that draws names and stuff. So uh, as you'll see, we're at the main space here. We've got this cool new streamer that we've been playing with today. And the beautiful Bauer speakers. I mean, this is like a playground, a toy store for audiophiles and home theater nuts. They just truly have a ton of different options here for people to look at. You want to go this yeah, way? Yeah, let's head in right, so, this is right here. That other door is closed, so I'll just let you step inside here. Sure. So they have a bunch. Pardon me. Secondary rooms and two channel systems in here. This is some of the legacy audio equipment, so the old Heresy products, uh, streaming two channel. Uh, some cool decor, and they show off all the different things they can do for isolation and bass management. And then, wow, that's a quiet room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah nice they got the acoustic treatments. Yeah. It has that calming effect. You get in here, yes. you get no resonance. It's completely treated. Uh, everyone who knows me knows that I, I love my BDI furniture. And, of course, they got BDI furniture all over this place made specifically for AV equipment. They got the acoustic panels. And if you can tell, like, the, the din that we were just hearing from out there has completely quieted yeah. down when we walked into it's this cool. room. It's cool. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, dramatic when you walk into a room that's this well treated. Yeah. And so this is, again, a, a great place for uh, folks to demo two-channel systems and hear music as it was intended to sound. This is not art. This is the frame TV. So uh, they've got them kind of scattered all over with you know, famous pieces of art from over the years. So you can experience that, too. Put that in living room. And... Wow, we still have people coming in. We have a ton of RSVPs tonight, so this place is going to get jammed. This is your firm, Philly, in the uh, Jersey area. You know what the traffic can be like. Yeah. So let's uh, keep going. This way. Let's see, this is normally where they have you know, the, uh, all their smaller pads for the display, the sound bars and stuff too. Uh, 
They also do car audio. Yeah. They got the whole wall. Their internal team is phenomenal. We were out here four years ago when I bought my truck. I bought my truck two days after we were here, and I wanted to get back out here for these guys to do it just because of the iconic nature of their installers. And then here, this is. Let me check your mic. I think we're. Uh... Oh, we. So, technical difficulties? Yeah, give me a second. We're going to fix this audio here yeah. in a second. So, I'll just keep talking right here because I'm closer if that matters. All right. So, How's that? We got better yeah. sound now? So, we'll know in a few seconds. Okay. So, now it is really noisy and loud here too. So, uh, we may be running into some interference. But this is a conventionally a small theater that they demonstrate. And here tonight, we're going to do our two-channel experience. So, we have Prime Wireless Pro Powered Bookshelves, the Sound Base Pro Amplifier, the Ultra Bookshelves, and the 3000 Micro. All in here where Ken's going to be doing uh, some demos of some great, great music in here. Don't mind the wire management. It's not why we're here. That's why you uh, get professional installers like the guys at Worldwide. So yeah, again, more acoustic uh, panels in here. Uh, they just they try to treat every room to uh, to give you the best sonics possible, and it really shows. And like we said, there's not a ton of stores like this in the country. Yeah. Back in the corner, they've got all the custom salamander uh, furniture designs, custom cabinets, flooring, all of that. And their consultation room. We're gonna figure out how to push our way this way. Okay, so the best sound, you want to follow me. You want to go into their main environment. Here's the giveaways for tonight. Somebody here is gonna win a majority of this stuff. There's multiple giveaways. Tonight. We're gonna come through with a camera. If you're not supposed to be here, make sure you hide. <laughs> Back in here is their premium two-channel experience, uh, where they've got multiple high-end speakers from Bowers, and Cal, and uh, some other brands, and our subwoofers are in this room, and we've taken our speakers out to be up front for the display tonight. So that looks familiar. Yeah, the 16 Ultra is supposed to be there, but we're using it as part of this experience tonight. And then obviously it's not all, I mean, it's worldwide stereo, but you can get any kind of TV. They got really high end projectors here as well. So it's uh, truly a paradise of AV. Yeah, and they, they have systems ready to go too. So if you come in and you're, you've got a budget, they have multiple systems and multiple room designs for all kinds of needs as well. They have their little we'll workshop on. area over here as well where they yeah, they do repairs in the house as well, along yeah. with so uh, service and answer questions. Busted amper driver, if you can bring it on, and uh, we might be able to help you out. Slide through here. Everybody say hi, Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. If you have any uh, warrants out, maybe hide yeah, your face. Hi. We're going to squeeze through here real quick, everybody. So, as we said, this is a really cool store with a lot of uh, experiences for their customers. i got to say, she's a little creepy though. I mean, I love this, this, the theme of this, but she yes. looks like her eyes are just like following me. She's been staring at me all day. Yeah. So then in here, this is a full on custom theater with hidden speakers, hidden subs, really high end projector setup, anamorphic screen that automatically adjusts based on content. Amazing. Of course, the starry sky. Yeah, they, uh, that's overhead. one of my favorite effects. It's Everything in here is room treated. So this is another really quiet room. Yeah, you may have seen, heard that the echoes just sort of stop once you get into this room, but they have cool little light fixtures here. I mean, again, this is for sort of that super high-end home theater experience with the, uh, even the theater seating on different levels um, really gives you a sense for what's possible. And this room isn't massive, you know, this is a room, this is something you could recreate it's in a basement. a 20 by 16 room. Yeah, and, you know, again, in completely invisible, uh, you got the Stewart screen, all the audio is hidden away, so it gives you sort of that really clean execution if you have those. Oh, I just uh, cut that. They kind of look like Oscars. Yeah, no, I was just noticing that. All right. So... All right, we're gonna do two more rooms and then we're gonna kick this thing off. I won't go in here, I'll let you get in there because it's kind of crowded, but this is another two channel experience. With, uh, a lot of Macintosh amps, Bauer speakers, Focal, some other brands. And What's cool here, they have Bauer different experience. switchers, so they have everything wired. So you can do like a true AB test where you're listening to one thing, you can pause it, and easily switch to another speaker so you can get the experience and kind of understand what the difference in fidelity is between them and kind of pinpoint what sounds best for your ears. Because as we all know, it's subjective. Not everyone likes the sound of every 
speaker or judges things the same. So uh, by having that testing and switching ability, it really opens up a lot of opportunities to hear the intricacies of what uh, different speakers can do. And Nick, I'm going to let you do that final room while I go collect everybody out here. Well, I need your mic if you're talking because I'm so just going to keep picking up your audio. We can uh, collect everybody. So I will come back in a moment, everyone. I'm going to collect the uh, show people. All right, we're going to head into the side. Uh, There's another, another two-channel room here. Again, they just keep on coming. And I would say this is probably the highest end of the high end here. Again, we have the bass traps in the, uh, the corner. Uh, we did have to take the 16 Ultras out here because this is where they're demoing our flagship subs as well. Again, loaded with that iconic Mac look. You can dig, uh, just running about 200K or so. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people in there. So that's, we got some in-walls. All right, we are going to head out to the big area over here. So we're going to head over to the smaller home theater room, which is where Larry will ultimately be stationed at. And in this one, we're doing a just a much more... Um, you know, you could call it affordable if you want, and it's uh, a 5.1 system with our prime bookshelf speakers here on the left and right, prime center channel, another prime bookshelf. And this is, again, an area where you can A, B, test, and, and listen to all these different speakers uh, powered by a whole wide range of uh, A, B receivers as well. So you can kind of pick and choose, you know, what models you're most interested in and get a sense for what, uh, what each speaker can do with different kinds of power. Uh, and then they have a very sophisticated switching network set up as well. So it uh, allows you to, you know, again, make those judgments. And uh, that's what this is all about, you know? And, and you can come here and just get advice if you want. You have all your gear. So, uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity to kind of see stuff. And how I recognize these guys too. Uh, we actually don't have these plugged in. We're gonna energize this space with just a single SB1000 Pro. So. Uh, that should be a, a lot of fun here in a minute, but I think we're about to kick start with an official presentation, so I'm going to see if I can elbow my way in here. Pardon me. It actually goes back before Gary started with SVS, because uh, he was in the same type of business that we're in. So it, it, it's, it's pretty special because we, we look at a category, you know, lab speakers and subwoofers, and they basically took that product and really took it to a whole other level, really set the bar height in the industry, which, which is pretty special. It used to be about just big boxes. Just putting out a lot of bass. Now it's really aesthetically, they're much more pleasing. They're easy to, to use. There's different sizes and shapes, in wall, micro. Uh, for us, it's a huge category. You know, we probably in our warehouses now, I was talking to Ken, we probably have about 400 pieces of SVS in our barn right now. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> so, so, one of the things we're doing tonight is we're, we're offering 0% financing till 2025, January 2025. So, if you wanted to get a product, we have it. And we can have a courier drop it off within a few days right to your home, which is pretty special. There's whole, a whole lot of other stuff in this business. We opened in 1979. I was driving by on my way to become an uh, electrical engineer and pulling to get a part-time job. And I never left. So <laughs> like Gary, this is, very, it, 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 there's a lot of passion for this, right? You You're saying about, we both stumbled into this thing. Yeah, we did. I told my wife, I've been with Worldwide Share Learner, I've been with my wife and I kept telling Bob, the guy who owns the company with his daughter, Emily, that I was going to leave and get a real job someday. And it just, I just, you know what? We just have a lot of fun. If you think about it, everybody remember the Maxell poster? Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, that's really why we're here, right? You're just, you know, you, we were talking about earlier, you get a glass of wine, you sit down, you've got two great speakers, you got a subwoofer, and you're just listening to music. I mean, for us, television never even got into this for many years. I mean, when we opened, it was reel to reels, eight tracks, the CD player wasn't even out, right? So it's pretty special. It's 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 just a lot of fun. So uh, we're in for a treat. These guys are gonna do some presentations. We got all the rooms set up. We would love to be your team, your 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 company, right? So I know a lot of you have traveled a long way to get here. How, how many people is it the first time here? Okay, awesome. So so thanks for coming. Who thinks they drove the farthest to get here? Go ahead. Uh, two hours. Okay. Anybody else? Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, 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 think that's, I think that's probably the winner. And he's the right? best dressed. And he's the best dressed. So, everybody register, right? Okay. If anybody needs a chair, we have some folding chairs here at some point. We'll, we'll get them out to so just grab us. What did I miss? That's great. That's good? Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. That's fine. So,
I, I want to thank Ron. Don't run away too quick. Right. I want to thank Ron. This this person, he's such a humble dude. This is a legendary person in our industry. You know how long I've known you? You probably I was just a peon, so you probably didn't even know that I knew you, but we've known each other more than 30 years. And um, just an incredible, inspiring person. And this company, Worldwide Stereo, is cool because you really were one of these old school right. companies. But unlike a lot of old school companies, one of which I once worked at, it was they've evolved. They've they've taken um, Worldwide Stereo into the you know kind of the modern world. It's really really cool. This is a partnership we value so highly. Thank so you. thank you so much, Ron. Right. And uh, I want to let's have a, a hand, please, for Worldwide Stereo for making us. I do, you know, I come from the D.C. area, and here I am, you know, kind of in um, enemy territory. I'm in Philadelphia, right? You got the, Phil the Philadelphia fans, all, they come to D.C. to root for the Philadelphia teams, and the Philadelphia teams always crush the D.C. teams. Um, so interestingly, I, I kind of woke up uh, uh, like a few days ago, and I realized, holy cow, I, I think I'm a Philadelphia Phillies fan. They are really a fun, of course, most of them were nationals before they were, they were, they were Phillies. So, no, it's, it's really great to be here. Um, it, great to be at Worldwide Stereo. One of our last really cool events we did was at Worldwide Stereo, yes. as you remember. That was a few years ago. Why did we wait so long? I don't know. So I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Um, tonight is about great sound, however you want to enjoy it. And there's only one way to really kick off something that's about great sound. We'll do a little housekeeping after this, but first, Larry, my, my, uh, I should introduce my partner in crime, Larry Magoo, our, our national director of training behind the camera. He should, he's so good looking. He should be turning the camera yeah, around. Be on camera. <laughs> our VP of marketing, Nick Brown, somewhere lurking is, um, Ken Cadis, our uh, director of us sales. So this is the, 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 the lean, well, lean, not necessarily my case lean, but the, the lean team that, that um, does SVS events all over the country and even the world. Um, and Larry, you're going to kick this off with a We're demo, a right? Killer home theater okay. demo. Right. And we'll, we'll set more of the system up kind of, that. but if you want to squeeze in, we are doing a full 5.2.2 home theater here. So it's going to be all around you. And uh, this is one of the demos that we, we love playing because it really showcases what a true home theater can be like. So we're going to get a little loud. We're going to feel this. And uh, here we go. The film we are about to see has no characters. If you stare at it of your imagination, the film is trying to affect First we go into the front wires of our power system. Overheating the mics a little bit. Uh, I, can, I can see some redlining happening on my little mic uh, sensor here. So if you guys didn't catch that first giveaway, 
Uh, that was Emily Jane, and she won the Prime Wireless Pro Powered Bookshelf Speakers. So, uh, overheating the mics there, yeah, a little bit. Can't get that close to the subs or else, you know, we might melt our faces. So, uh, I'm going to kind of hang on the periphery here. I know you guys love your excursion shots. But there's some beautiful speakers in here, too, that, uh, from other brands. So, we'll chill for a minute. And I think you guys have probably seen Cymatics and the other two. enjoyed that demo and I hope you did um, you know doing that in a massive store like this um, it would be it's even better when it's in your own living space and that's really what today is about it's about enjoying you know amazing experiences in your living space we'll talk a little bit more about that but maybe we should do a little housekeeping first sure. so this part of our event will probably go on for another 35 ish minutes we're going to talk about home theater we're going to talk about two channel stereo we're going to talk about great sound Nick is going to tell us what the modern audio file is, um, and we'll help answer any questions that you guys have. Um, then we're going to break off into what we call experience zones. Uh, there'll be a more affordable home theater. Where is that, Larry? Point right behind us. Right behind us. And then there will be a, a two-channel system featuring our Prime Wireless Pro um, smart wireless ecosystem. That's where opposite we're that direction. Uh, all the so Larry's going to do that. Uh, the demo of the home theater. Ken will do the demo of the two-channel system. And then we're all going to regroup around 5 of 8, 10 of 8, and we will do the drawing for all the prizes. Let's make a deal together right now. If you're not here and we draw your name, you didn't win. Is that fair? Yes. yes. Okay. So hang with us until until then, and, then, and we'll do the drawing. Um, so... Today's about great sound, um, and you know, SVS is all about bringing great sound to um, more people. Some people were coming up to me. It, it was a recurring theme of this evening, which, which was along the lines of, look, you can spend any amount of money you want to 
in a store like Worldwide Stereo. There's no doubt. And SBS is in a lot of stores like this, although I think this is one of the most professional ones in the whole world. There are other stores like it, specialty audio video stores. We also do a lot of um, audiophile consumer shows. There was one in D.C. just a week ago or so, and they're all over the country. And a lot of times people are coming into the SBS room after hearing $150,000 repair speakers, okay. or Nick might make the joke that, okay, the system that you just came from, our stuff actually costs less than the cable that connected yeah. that stuff. <laughs> so, and you know, I don't want to say that SVS is a quote unquote value brand. What we're really more about is bringing reference experiences to more people by hopefully talking your language, not rigidly defining what great sound is or what content you're allowed to enjoy, which Nick is going to talk about and also bringing reference experiences to price ranges where that hasn't been possible before. And that's one reason maybe why we have so many wonderful people here tonight. That's what it's all about. So today, uh, the first demo we did was a home theater demo. Larry, you want to walk through yeah. the different parts of the home theater? So, and I might, char I might charge in and talk this. And no way. It's <laughs> possible. <laughs> so, uh, you hear the sarcasm there. But uh, yeah, what you listen to is what we call a 5.2.2 Dolby Atmos home theater. And what does that mean? Well, each of those numbers represents a particular channel count or placement. So the first five are the speakers that are around you, or what we call the bed layer, if you want to get geeky. And that's the two speakers you hear, uh, you see on the front. They are the front left and right. That is for the stereo imaging, the left and right panning. This is our Prime Pinnacle Pro Tower. So it's right in the middle of our lineup. <clears throat> dialogue, which there really wasn't any in that last demo, the next one is going to be all about the dialogue, comes from... This center channel here, it's the most important speaker in your system because you've all been in that room where you're constantly turning it up and down and adjusting and all that stuff. Well, a lot of that comes from a lack of oomph or settings on your center channel or television or soundbar. And so this is a vital part of the system. And the next demo we do is pretty much all about that speaker and you're gonna have that. Then behind you- So just before you move behind, so the three front speakers are creating uh, basically a sense of everything is coming from a specific point in space between even to the outside of um, and behind and in front of these three front speakers. And why do we need a center channel? Um, if the only person in the room were where you're sitting, you found the sweet spot right away. Have you been standing here since early this morning? No. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the sweet spot. That's if, if everybody in the room could stand right where you are, we might not even need a center channel. In some ways, there would be a phantom center channel because these uh, outstanding speakers would work together to create that sense. But because home theater is something that's meant to be enjoyed by a lot of people in a room, you may be over here where Nick is or over here where you are. And for that to be a believable experience, that you need a center channel that creates that sound that whatever is coming from the screen itself sounds like it's coming right from there thanks to the center channel, no matter where you are in the room. Okay, Larry. And that'll be the main front stage where most of the action, activity, music, dialogue takes place. And then behind you, uh, about waist level on the shelves, we have a pair of our prime bookshelves. And those we are using for the surround speakers. So those will be like channel four and five in the theater. And what happens there is background music, effects, you know, monsters, explosions, things kind of like bullets and jets. Yeah. And giving so you a sense that you're in a space a specific space you're in a space you're there with the action and so that's the first five and most of us are, are familiar with a five channel surround system because it's been around you know for 35 40 years and then the first decimal point so that's five and then point two that's the two subwoofers which we have up here on the sides and those are our 16 ultra the sealed model so sb 16 ultra and normally in a space like this we would do ported because of the larger environment but we also like to showcase that a sealed sub can take on a large space as well. So can I interrupt your shirt? Sure. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to. <laughs> he never interrupts. He, he could say no, and yeah. I'd probably still, still interrupt. Still do it. Um, so uh, let's talk about this in a, from a thirty thousand foot level. Um, if you're just watching TV, we all do that, right? Um, how would what would the emotional content of that experience be like? How connected are you when you just have the TV on? Ask yourself that question. We believe at SBS three quarters of the emotional involvement of any 
home yeah, theater experience, any TV-based experience so comes from the what? Demo gets fired up. Just leave a comment. From the sound, right? right? So, so um, the sound is creating that emotional good. impact. Larry's talking about the subwoofers. What is a subwoofer? It's a purpose-built speaker designed to create bass. Uh, obviously, SVS is well known for that. We're the number one subwoofer <laughs> brand in the world. We're really proud of that. And one reason why it's so important is a subwoofer creates bass that not only do you hear, but there are more giveaways for the online feel. And hopefully you did. And I know I, I was actually out about. there and I was uh, feeling it. So hopefully you were feeling it in much. here during Larry's demo. That is maybe even as much as half of the emotional content of that sound experience that you're getting coming from that. Yeah, and the, the subwoofers are really what you feel when you go to the concerts, you go to the movies, you get that punch in the chest and it doesn't always i know a lot of you are like ah that's too much it doesn't always have to be like that but we're at a show we want to have some fun with it too but you can dial it back and blend it in so the subwoofers are what bring in that, show that, that, that the next demo, right? yeah so the, the next demo was almost no bass uh and then so that's the five the point two then the last point two you heard are the two speakers up above us here that is our prime elevation speaker and we call that object-based surround sound or how many speakers you have to create a sense of immersion above you. And they can be in front of you, they can be on the ceiling, they can be behind you. And really the purpose of it is to create that full bubble of audio, not only around you with the speakers below, but also above. So you get more of that experience of something going from the front to the back and up above you, a helicopter coming down with the blades, you know, King Kong chasing you down and breathing down your neck in Ready Player One. And it's just the best and newest advancement that's come around in home theater in a long time. And what we do is these speakers. So you're saying be, it goes from a 360 degree experience, but it's all on the same vertical plane. Now, when we add these height effect speakers, now we, we created not just a 360 degree experience in front of you and behind you, but actually a three dimensional experience because now we're creating height effects. What Larry means by object based surround sound is it literally has the ability to create a sense that here's an object here, here's an object here, there's an algorithm going on between those speakers and all the other speakers in the room to create that sense of not only is it going on all around you, but it's also going on in a way that isn't a specific point in space above, below, wherever. Yeah, and it, it's uh, something newer to home theaters. It's been in the cinemas for a while. If you go to like an AMC Dolby Cinema or a Cinemark XD or a Regal RPX, you'll get that experience. And now you can bring it into the home. And it's really easy to do with these. They just simply mount on a wall and mount on a ceiling once you get wire in place. We had a question back over here. Yeah. Um, when you classify these height speakers, which would you say is more important, the height speaker or the side speaker in the 7.2? This is a great question. Can I, can I do this Have one? at it. I've got, we've all so, got opinions on this. Because I get asked this question all the time. What I, I want to do this because not everyone... <clears throat> When we started with quote unquote Dolby digital surround sound, everybody remember that term? It was three front speakers and then two surround speakers. And then before this idea of height effects came this idea, oh, you could have side surround, back surround, you can have front height speakers, rear height speakers, none of them were being, they were all kind of um, deriving from that 5.1 signal and making sort of things uh, uh, with it to create that sense of being surrounded by a sort of a continuous, do I, so your question is, should I go to, what's better for the next step after five speakers? Should it be have side surround and back surround speakers or should I have height effect speakers? And to me, it's really a no brainer. Do the height effect speakers. Height effects create that, that three dimensional feeling. Side surround and rear surround speakers, it's fun if you can, if you can do it, if you can afford to have seven, speakers that are that are on this vertical plane that's great but the big move forward is to have height effects and have that three-dimensional um effect does that answer your question <clears throat> okay great one more, oh, one more. To elaborate on that if you have just five speakers three fronts and two satellites which is what i have right should they be set up as you need to surround speakers <laughs> 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 I'm trying to make a living here. <laughs> for now, should they be set as a as a sub? I mean, as a um, back speakers, yeah. or should they be set as a pipe? So, so when you have, if you have five speakers to work with, then I totally would do the normal five speakers. What Larry described first. Yeah, just three five in the front, yeah. two in the two in the 
back corners of the room, that will create a really fun surround sound effect. The next step, do you have a subwoofer, sir? Yes. Okay, the subwoofer. Yes. All right, I, I take back. I didn't I plant them. Right <laughs> I take it all back. Um, so that's a great system. And then eventually you might think about yeah. at some point, because this is kind of a fun addiction, adding those height effects. That would be the next step to your, to your question. And question. Shoot. Now, you talk about height effects. Now, what between the height effects and uh, like Dolby Atmos type of speaker? Now, since you have, do you need both? So that is a Dolby Atmos speaker for, for all intents and purposes. It's a direct radiating height effect speaker. So you would tell your receiver you have a height effect speaker and it will create that quote unquote Dolby Atmos effect. Also most, I don't want to get too, I don't want to throw too many of these techno battle terms, but if you have Dolby Atmos, you also probably will have DTSX, which is the DTS ver version of it. And actually Larry's demo that he did is, is um, DTSX, which is the DTS version of it. Same deal, basically adding a height dimension to the full surround sound that you get in the home theater. Yeah. Can I answer your question, sir? Okay. There, there's three ways to do Dolby Atmos really in the home. The first way that came out was to put these reflective speakers on top of your front stage and reflect that up to the ceiling. And it's it, it's just a starting point. It's not, it's obviously not going to sound as good. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, so that's step one. The other option is to cut like they've done here, like the speakers in the ceiling there is to cut speakers in your ceiling to have a sound coming down into the room. But normally due to, you know, studs in the ceiling or duct work, you can't always get them in the optimal space. So our design, if you go to a movie theater, guys and gals, where are the speakers? They're on the side walls, right? Or on the ceilings if you go to Atmos. Are they built into the wall or into the ceiling? No. They're on the wall and where are they facing? into the audience. So it's kind of a same kind of design philosophy here. It's a direct radiating speaker, so it goes at the listening position. And then there's a point where that speaker and the speaker back there meet, where that speaker and this speaker meet to create a more accurate or more immersive experience. And it's- Well, that's a great way to put it because the, um, and we can circle, that kind of circles us back to the whole purpose of this conversation, which is a home theater when it's done right. It's room or an area in your home. It could be a dedicated area or it might be a living room, a den, a family room, whatever. Um, it's an area where you can go there and the system's job is to help you completely, what we call suspend your disbelief, completely surrender yourself to the experience and let yourself believe that what you're experiencing is really happening and you're right there with it. So each one of these speakers and everything that Larry is describing, their job is to do that. I think Dolby Atmos was the next step in creating that level of convincing believability. And in our opinion, what's going on? I'm, I'm queuing up the next one. Are you quieting me down? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> That's the hook coming off stage. In, in our opinion, the idea that you could create something coming from above you by shooting up to the ceiling and bouncing down at you, it's highly imperfect, rarely works. Ideally, having a direct radiating speaker that literally is above you and aiming down at you that's that's the ideal if you can do it. And Larry, I think this is a good time for a demo because we we're going to sort of transition into talking about movie from movies to about music. And Larry's going to do a multi-channel demo, but it's featuring music. We have one more question yeah, here one, before one we get that. Sure. I have, I have the three in the front and the two surrounds in the back. Okay. I had to go to the ceiling for the high one. Here. Okay. Probably because my wife will kill me. Sure. Right. I do have two cell phones. Okay. But it's about a 200 square foot room. So I have one in the front and the other one diagonally, right. like behind a couch. Is that a better setup to diagonal than to have the two in the front? It's so. hard to know for sure, but probably. But I think you're, what you did when you got two subwoofers, again, I am trying to make a living here, so two is good, uh, better. But let's, let's talk really about why would, why would you want dual subwoofers? The reason is if you walk around the room and you have one subwoofer, a lot of times because of the length of the sound wave of a bass low frequency note, they bounce off walls and cancel each other out or they bounce off walls and reinforce each other. So you can walk around the room and one part of the room it might sound right, another part of the room it might sound like, oh my God, I'm getting bowled over by so much bass. And another part of the room, the waves are literally canceling each other out. So you're like, where, where did the bass go? When you have two subwoofers, the way the gentleman describes there, it's not even so much if you have a really good subwoofer, like 
we'd like to say an SVS subwoofer. Um, it's not even that you needed all that horsepower so much, but you're canceling out those or you're eliminating those room nodes, um, the cancellation or the reinforcement, which is called the standing wave. And it makes it basically anywhere in the room, 80% of those weird room nodes get reduced by having two. Uh, it's amazing how I only had one for a long time, just a one in the corner next right. to the, and when I put the other one, it's amazing how much it the is. weirdness goes away. It's, it's, it was incredible. It's I a really was wondering great thing. just if it's good behind the couch in a, in a diagonal, or is it better to have the two subwoofers in the front? And that depends on the room. Most people will tell you the diagonal is better, but I think it doesn't work for most people's room layouts. Gotcha. Just having two the way we have two in the front works great. And by the way, if we think, if you think we're telling you, oh, you got to double your budget, you got to get two subwoofers, we're not. In fact, what I would say is whatever your budget is, cut it in half and get two subwoofers. Uh, if it's an SVS subwoofer, and I'm, I, I'm, we always say we're not doing an SVS infomercial, although Nick always smirks when I say that. Um, <laughs> But um, we're not, uh, every SVS subwoofer represents the peak of SVS technology. So if you have X amount of money for a budget for subwoofer, cut it in half and get two, you're probably going to eliminate the room nodes that the gentleman was describing. Okay, um, so we're going to transition from more of a movie orientation to more of a music orientation. And Nick, are you ready to help us? I'm going to do an off a giveaway off air here real quick while this is going on, and then I'll, I will rejoin. Right, we, don't want, we don't want to work you too so, hard. I know, we're, I know. We're going to do a, a demo sweating. that's the exact opposite of the first one we did. So this is a sequence from the movie The Greatest Showman, and it's very much about the center channel. And the reason we choose this one is because you're going to hear this singer go from whispers. It's going to start off very quiet, and then you're going to hear her tone change. You're going to hear her take a breath between notes and get to the point where she's wailing. And then the rest of it, uh, you'll feel the orchestra will kind of fill in the space around you through the rest of the speakers and then a, a little bit of bass. So uh, I'm going to ask if we could step up that speaker just a little bit because uh, that will impact everybody behind you. Uh, so I'm going to hit play and take you to the world of the greatest show. The Swedish Nightingale, Miss Jenny Lynn. And I mean, I have seen the greatest showman about 8,000 times. So uh, hopefully you guys won't miss that demo too, too much, but we owe you a giveaway. And you know what? We know we're running a little bit later today than we normally do, um, but that's okay because it's live and anything goes. And uh, we'll probably run here for another 15 minutes or so, but our next giveaway is a SB1000 Pro subwoofer. And uh, that's not what you're seeing on screen right now, but you are the winner, Mr. J.R. Riley. J.R. Riley, congratulations. Got an SB1000 Pro coming your way. And uh, I'm going to kind of linger out here. It's, it's a lot cooler in this room. And uh, you know, the scenery's not so bad either. So we'll, uh, we'll subtly work our way back in here. And I should take this minute to kind of tease the fact that we're going to have two happy hours next week. On Wednesday, I'm sorry, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we will be going to Nebraska Furniture Mart in Omaha, Nebraska. And then we'll be going to Listen Up in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So we'll be doing live events just like this at two other phenomenal showrooms. And we'll be doing uh, giveaways at those live events. So you can find information about those events on our site or on Eventbrite or on our Facebook page and RSVP. All free, loaded with awesome giveaways, including the $9,000 system giveaway that we're doing at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Which is great. You go there in person. 
watch some King Kong here for a minute. I don't know, Ready Player One, my bad. Uh, I would love to be answering questions, but the comments are flying by so Looking around at the smiles during that was uh, was really awesome. So I, based on where a lot of you are standing, I saw smiles over here and back here and over there. So I'd assume you heard the dialogue from that crystal clear. And a lot of that is the just the beefiness, the capability of this three-way design center channel. And most of the speakers you'll encounter in this space, you'll see what's considered a two-way center channel or a three-way center channel. And if it's a two-way design, it has two, two mid-range drivers and a tweeter or two uh, whoopers and a tweeter. Do you want me and to translate this into English for anyone? Yeah. Yeah. So I think we get that. But here, if you look at this one behind Gary, you'll see that there's two drivers on the outside, a driver in the middle, and then a tweeter up above. So there's woofers, mid-range, and tweeters in a configuration that's designed to spread the sound throughout the room. And that's so Larry's, why Larry's point was great everywhere. This vertical orientation is really important of the High frequency driver, that's this, also called a tweeter, and the mid-range driver, because they're vertically oriented, there's this thing called off-axis response, exactly what we were talking about. So that it should sound great to you because you're right in front of it, but because it's a vertical orientation, it should have sounded great to you too, and to you. Um, and what Larry's talking about when he says a two-channel, a lot of times you'll see these lower um, center channel speakers, and they'll have one high frequency driver and then two drivers outside. The problem with that is it creates this thing called lobing. And what lobing is, is basically aiming the speaker straight out. And so you lose a lot of that sense of, oh, it sounds great, even though I'm not directly in front of the speaker. That's really important. Okay, so Nick, are you able to yeah, pass, the, pass the baton? Because Nick and I are going to talk, what we want to talk about, you know, one of the SBS's um, hallmarks is what Nick calls some, see the oh, Larry's going to go ahead and he, <laughs> since he's not talking, he's going to ruin everybody's. So um, I want to ask you guys, before we talk about where this is all evolving into, um, let's talk about what the traditional conventional definition of an audio file has been up until now. So I want to ask you all, when you think, close your eyes and think of an audio file, is this person who is an audiophile, by the traditional definition, be honest, is this person male or female? Yeah. Yeah, always male. Okay, male. And is this person super young, a tween, or is it probably an older person? Older. Oh, older. Oh, an older male. Oh, really old. Now, <laughs> like me, me qualifies. Okay. And so, and this older male, is their budget like very restricted that they really only want to spend a small amount of money? Or is their budget, Nick, Nick helped me do this this way instead of saying they're rich or they, but um, is their budget really big or is their budget not so big? Big. Really big. Depending on what they did in NY Town. <laughs> right. But then are they still an audio file? Well, by the old audio. definition. By the old, only by the old definition. I think it was a very restrictive thing. That it was a it was a, a, a male who had a massive budget who was older. Well, who, I'll add one more caveat. Are are they enjoying their system and inviting their family to come down and turn the knobs and touch anything you want to? Positioning a little bit, let them adjust it, have fun, play around. This is everyone's space. Or is it a solitary sweet spot where they're sort of sitting? Yeah. Are they sitting there alone? Where he's been here since like eight this morning to make sure he had this. <laughs> yes, this, this space. He's sitting alone and, and in what the sweet that? spot. Yeah, the sweet spot. That's right. I mean, they call it the spot, not yeah. spots, because there's one and it's, it's a solitary good. hobby. And there's only room for one person. Correct. Nobody can sit in my spot. Nobody can touch. That's right. All right. So maybe help us understand what you, where you so think it's involved. We're sort of on a mission to dispel some of those uh, stereotypes that I think uh, people have come to think about when when they 
you know, rationalize what a, an audio file can be. Um, I'll ask another question. Does anyone here play video games? That's a, that's a fair showing there. And you know what? We want to make it so if you consider yourself an audio file or if you have appreciation for great sound, that qualifies you. If you're into video games, if you're into streaming television, if you're into being passionate about great sound and making the best experience you can possibly have for yourself, that qualifies you for an audio file. And we go to these hi-fi shows that Gary was talking about where we make the jokes of like, yeah, you can go next door and if you're in the market for a $25,000 cable, they'll take care of you. If you want to get eight speakers and create a complete escape for yourself where you can listen to your favorite music, watch your favorite movies and feel like you are right in the middle of the action, you can do it on a much more lean budget than maybe if you're pursuing that. And I think there's still these stereotypes that exist where people feel like they have to break the bank in order to have the kind of experience that SVS can provide that's fractional to what you go to some of these hi-fi sh shows and get. And they also rigidly define what the content's allowed to be. Exactly. It has to be two-channel music. Eagles, hell freezes. Maybe it's, <laughs> right. Or, 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 it's a, or it's, it's a vinyl record. Listen, I have a record player. I have a really nice record player. But the idea that that's the only way great sound can come to my ears seems totally ridiculous. We all have, who, who, who has Netflix in the room here? I think probably one or two of us. You know, Netflix does tons of content in Dolby Atmos. It sounds really, really good. Um, and Amazon Prime and other yeah, ways. And I'll take it even a step further. I have a, a college age son and I have friends who I would not consider audiophiles, even by the expanded definition that, that we just presented. But they have a sound bar. And I asked them, you've been into my home theater, you have your sound bar you know, do you maybe aspire to want to get something better than that? And they're like, oh, hell yeah. Like when the budget allows or yes, you know, once my significant other will see the light and, and allow the uh, situation to, to happen. But, you know, what I tell them is it's not just about buying the gear. It's about the journey. And when I talk to some of the folks who came in early today, they're talking about their systems. They're like, you know what? She's like, I don't have a budget to really upgrade anything, but like, I know I can do these little things. And I'm like, Talk to the people at Worldwide Stereo. Talk to our customer support team. Placement, room treatments, little things, even settings on an AV receiver. All this stuff is part of the journey where if you invest yourself in knowledge, and there's about a hundred YouTubers out there, us included, where we spend an hour just talking about this kind of thing and little tweaks you can make without spending a dime to get that extra bit of performance because there's a lot of diminishing returns. You spend $50,000 for a speaker or $5,000, there may not be that much of a delta. But if you fix your room, that can have a dramatic effect. So I just encourage people to take that passion, share it with others, let them know that it's not all about the gear and spending money. It's about sound appreciation and just engaging yourself to what's possible. Excuse me, what's possible. You know, one of the maybe controversial things that I do say about the audio industry, in my opinion, is the audio industry, a lot of it is predicated on the belief that pretty much no one cares about great sound anymore. And, and SVS, we don't agree. We, we actually believe, and I think this room is proof that everybody appreciates great sound as long as you make it possible for them to enjoy it within their budget and also with the content that they like, not necessarily the content that you say they should like. Um, it's like the old joke, and I know we, nobody listens to the radio in their car anymore. Now we all stream and do stuff like that. If you ask somebody, hey, what kind of music do you listen to in a store like this, the first thing they're going to say is what? probably like the classical or jazz and is that the reality well if you, we used to joke about it when i back in the day millions of years ago when i did this um at retail was you look at the stations that they programmed in their car guess what there wasn't a classical station in there but that's okay because we're all about we're all about enjoying great sound the way we want to okay um i know larry's larry's very You're nervous, trying to keep us on time yeah yeah we too late for that but i think larry Maybe you can put it all together for us with a final demo that brings all this together. After Larry's demo, doing, then we'll break off into uh, experience boat? zones, and then we'll do the drawing. And I will be, I'm not going to go to an experience zone. I'm just going to hang here, and I'm here to okay. meet you, want you turtles? guys and answer you your turtles questions. Next time. So, Larry, it's all yours. Well, we're, we're having a debate on the final demo here. And uh, Gary said it's my choice. And some of you watch us on the broadcast and kind of know where I'm going. And I'm seeing some head nods. So I think we're going to go that direction. We were uh, going to put it to a vote, but I feel like it would uh, it would be a landslide between Spider-Man or Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so, so we're going to take you to the world of the Ninja Turtles, the 2014 movie. And the reason I choose this demo 
is because we are going to go down to about 12 hertz space in this room. Uh, it's stupid, it's dumb, but it's a lot of fun. You're going to laugh, and uh, what you're going to feel. So this is a full 5.2.2 demo here. So all seven speakers, two subs, and we're going to do two bass sweeps during this demo. The first one will go into the mid teens, the low one, the second one's gonna go into the low teens, and you will all be making the exact same face the characters are on screen during the second one, I assure you. So uh, this one gets us in trouble. Gary hates it, so he walks away when I play it. And uh, you know, if you're if you're Gen X, you, you have a soft spot in your heart for these guys. So if you're trying to punish your neighbors or yeah. other people in the house. Uh, this is the this only is movie I have do. ever played at home and heard the pipes. Uh, in the wall for my shower and bathroom. So, <laughs> give me a second. Oh, this thing fast forward super fast. Just kidding, you didn't see all that just now. All right. Here we go. All right. Target, one the clock! There we go, guys! Donnie, what's the best way back to Manhattan? You just need to stay on this road. If we can get to the maintenance hatch at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> but we we have fun with that sequence just because there's a lot of activity there there's a ton from the center channel the surrounds the height effect speakers but the subwoofers are just non-stop and uh people hate us when we're at trade shows and play that one but I, I think you all experience what we wanted you to from that system and so uh what we're gonna do here just saying like i said gary hates that demo so he disappears uh what we're gonna do now we've got two different experience zones set up I'm going to take over the room behind us. So there's just a door right here. We're going to do a, a smaller, more attainable home theater in there. And then on the opposite side of the store, over by Car Audio, Ken is going to take you through the world of our uh, two-channel experience with my favorite product, our Prime Wireless Pro Bookshelf. And what we'll do is just before 8, we'll collect back out here and do some drawings, geek out. You'll see Nick running around the camera. We'll be in there answering questions, doing demos. And uh, I thought I saw Gary, but he's probably off to the side. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out up here. 
run whichever direction you'd like to go or kind of hang out out here. Uh, Gary will be out here answering and questions. And we should fire up too. this system too yeah, a couple more times. A little bit. I'm going to go jump in here in the other room and get that stuff ready. Oops, pardon me. Sorry. All right. We have one more giveaway for the evening, but uh, I wanted to do a quick little shout out to the folks at Worldwide Stereo who uh, hosted this amazing event. They did an incredible job. They may turn the store upside down to make this uh, a reality. So, uh, in a second, maybe I can turn my camera around this time. All right, you don't get to see my face. <laughs> way harder than I remember. All right, well. Like I was saying, thank you to Worldwide Stereo. Amazing staff. Come down here, Montgomery, Bill, Pennsylvania, right outside Philly. And uh, check them out for all your hi-fi home theater needs. Uh, as I mentioned before I do this last giveaway, we're going to have two happy hours next week in Omaha, Nebraska, at Nebraska Furniture Mart, and at Colorado Springs, Colorado, at Listen Up. So uh, stay tuned for those next Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. I'll take you out to the peaceful rumblings of our little fountain effect here. Uh, again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Finally, give away the evening is an SP2000 Pro subwoofer with a SoundPath RCA subwoofer cable. You can get my reflection right there. And the winner of that is one Michael Mazzara. Michael Mazzara, congratulations. Got a sub coming your way. Stay tuned next week. We'll be here Tuesday and Wednesday live streaming from different parts of the country. Appreciate everyone tuning in as always and happy listening. Thank you.